Hello, Patterns of Evidence family. Welcome to our new series about the seven churches of Revelation. We have partnered with a filmmaker in France, Christophe Hanover, for this excellent series. It will examine the letter from the resurrected Christ given to the last living apostle, John the Beloved, for the seven churches of Asia Minor. We created two films titled Times of Fire and Times of Deception to cover this relevant content and to look at the warnings for us today from these seven churches. We will be talking with one of the experts in the films, Dr. Mark Wilson, who is answering over 200 questions in our newest lecture series DVD titled Exploring the Seven Churches of Revelation. Today, you'll meet Mark Wilson and hear about the island of Patmos where the letters were written. If you like what you hear, then you can purchase the full DVD series at our store or on digital as well. Enjoy the episode. Good to meet you and welcome to Patmos. Thank you very much. Can you tell us about yourself and your background? In 1992, I came to Turkey for the first time and visited the seven churches. For me, it was an amazing experience because to see the history, the archaeology, the geography related to these very important churches in the book of Revelation, it, it, for me, it was life-changing. So I went on from there to write a doctoral thesis uh, on the book of Revelation and the seven churches. Uh, I completed that in 1997. Uh, and then in 2001, uh, I organized a, a uh, network called the Seven Churches Network. And my goal with this was to provide information about the seven churches to Christians around the world. And so, in 2001, my wife and I came to Turkey to live for four months, and uh, we stayed in one of the seven churches, Smyrna, during this time. And uh, it was during these four months then we received a, a real vision to come over and live in Turkey, which we did in 2004. So it's been a progressive uh, movement in our lives from the United States to come to Turkey and to be more involved with the uh, work among the seven churches. What do the seven churches bring us? Well, for me, as the final book in the New Testament, uh, the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse, uh, is such an important document, not only for Christians, but for all people uh, around the world. Uh, I think it's one of the most important books uh, for Western civilization. It's influenced art and music and film, uh, all aspects of culture, uh, but especially for Christians who are looking for the hope of Jesus returning again. It gives uh, a blueprint in many ways uh, for the uh, coming of Jesus Christ uh, during his second return. Are you a believer? Do you study? Uh, no, I'm, I am a believer, yes, uh, but uh, I'm a, a New Testament scholar. So my interest in, uh, in Turkey is working with uh, early Judaism and Christianity and understanding the background and the formation uh, of these religions within the context of ancient Asia Minor. You say that the book of Revelation is a major book from Western civilization. Can you tell me more about that? And is it important for us today? Well, if you ask most Christians, they will say the book of Revelation is the most difficult book to understand in the Bible. So it uh, closes the canon of Scripture, the final of the 27 books of the New Testament, the last of all the books in the Bible. But for many Christians, because of the nature of the visions that John has, uh, it's, it's very complicated, very complex for people to understand. And so uh, they uh, don't understand the history and the uh, uh, archaeology, the culture behind these visions. And so this is why it's very important to visit on site and come and see the seven churches because the visual world of the book of Revelation really comes to life then. 
There are a lot of symbols used in Revelation related to Jewish tradition, making it hard for us to understand this book. Well, I think one of the reasons that uh, Christians have a difficult time understanding Revelation is they've not read the Old Testament because John's mind is immersed in the Old Testament, the imagery there, and he draws so much of it out from the book of Genesis, uh, the exodus, the wilderness wanderings of, of the uh, Israelites there, especially the prophetic books, books like Daniel and Ezekiel and Zechariah. And as you read uh, these Old Testament books and understand the imagery there, then suddenly you begin to understand the imagery that John is using also in the book of Revelation. So, do you think that we have to read the Old Testament to be able to understand the book of Revelation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a, 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 a knowledge of the Old Testament, the imagery uh, that we find there, uh, whether it's the, the horses or the menorahs or whatever we see there, uh, it becomes much clearer, I think, in understanding Revelation. On a small Greek island in the Aegean Sea, an event in the first century marked the history of Christianity. The Apostle John arrived in Patmos as an exile. He was deported by the Romans. The Romans would exile political prisoners to islands uh, all throughout the Eastern Mediterranean. The Apostle had a unique experience that would change him forever. Deep in a cave, he received a vision of the resurrected Christ, who revealed himself and gave John a message to transcribe in the famous book of Revelation. The text begins with a series of letters to seven churches in the first century's Asia Minor. What was the significance of these messages, and why speak to these seven churches? My journey begins on the island of Patmos in Greece, off the coast of Turkey in the Aegean Sea. What is the importance of Patmos in the Bible? Well, apart from the New Testament, uh, Patmos really is not mentioned very often in ancient sources. So it's sort of a forgotten island, but because it's mentioned in Revelation 1-9, uh, all Christians around the world know the importance of this island and its significance for the book of Revelation. So in a sense, uh, it's important in history through uh, the book of Revelation. Who wrote the book of Revelation? Well, he identifies himself in the book of Revelation several times by John. So the early church always believed this was John, uh, one of the 12, uh, beloved disciple, author of the gospel, one of the sons of thunder. So uh, this is the traditional view who the John, uh, the author of Revelation was. Are we sure it's the same John who wrote it? Well, in New Testament scholarship, there is very much a controversy uh, whether John the prophet that we have in the book of Revelation is the same person who's the uh, author of the fourth gospel and the letters of John. So this is a very much an academic question. Uh, some people have even suggested there is a, another John, John the Elder, uh, who uh, was the author of the three letters in the New Testament. So, but for most Christians, uh, and especially in the Orthodox tradition we have on the island, uh, there is only one John. Uh, one of the problems in the uh, early church that I believe caused confusion was the uh, early church historian Eusebius. And he uh, reflected a tradition uh, that there were two tombs for John in the city of Ephesus. And uh, we go to Ephesus today, we go to the St. John's church there, and we see there is only one tomb. So this confusion that comes in very early about more than one John I think is uh, not true. And John was the disciple that Jesus loved. Yes, so uh, this is the, the tradition, uh, again reflected in early Christian literature, that he was the beloved disciple who was unnamed in the Gospel of John. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, discussion points is uh, the dating of the book of Revelation. 
So uh, here on the island of Patmos, the tradition and orthodoxy is that, uh, uh, and this is also reflected in early uh, church sources like Eusebius, it was under the Emperor Domitian uh, sometime in the 90s that uh, John was sent into exile. There's another stream of uh, uh, New Testament scholarship that sees uh, the date uh, of around 69 as the time when uh, John is exiled. And I'm uh, in this particular group of scholars. Uh, I think that uh, after Nero commits suicide, we have great turmoil in the Roman Empire at this time called the Year of the Four Emperors. Four different uh, emperors ruled uh, in the empire. Uh, the Jewish war is going on in Israel, uh, culminating in the destruction of the temple in AD 70. So a very tumultuous period in history. And I, for me, this uh, works better historically uh, for the date uh, of Revelation. When we get to 95, the traditional date, we have no record of any persecution of Christians by Domitian uh, in any of the ancient sources. We know from early historical sources that uh, both Peter and Paul who were killed in Rome around 65 in the first great persecution of the church. So all of these are happening in the late 60s, uh, which again suggests to me that this would be a time for John to be exiled uh, to the island of Patmos. Where did John live? So Ephesus was really the apostolic center because it's also the political center uh, of the province. So uh, this would be the natural place for John to uh, live and to, in a sense, uh, take over the work of the Apostle Paul in the province and continue uh, to lead the churches in the province of Asia. How did John come to Patmos? The book of Revelation really doesn't tell us specifics about how he came here. Uh, it, he says that he's on the island because of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he identifies himself as a brother and companion in the suffering. So we're in a period of, of uh, persecution, not in all of the churches, but in some of them. And so uh, a reconstruction that I thought would be plausible is that here we have a period in church history when the Christians have just been persecuted in Rome. Peter and Paul have both been killed. We also have a Jew coming from the war zone in Jerusalem there, arriving in Ephesus. And so with the political instability, I think if I was a Roman governor, I would like to get this leader out of the way for a period of time until the political and religious situation settles down. And so uh, in my reconstruction, I think this is why John now is sent to the island of Patmos. Do we know who exiled John to Patmos? There were two types of exiles in the Roman Empire at this time. Uh, the first was uh, one by the emperor himself. So he sent people of uh, his own family, senators and other important uh, elite uh, two islands, but the provincial governor also had the right to send uh, uh, prisoners uh, and uh, individuals to uh, islands as well. And uh, I think it's the governor in Asia who now sends uh, John to the island of Patmos. How is the book of Revelation written? Well, we don't really know. Uh, there is a tradition uh, on the island that the, one of the deacons uh, of, mentioned in Acts chapter 6, who are in Jerusalem, a man by the name of Procurus, uh, came to the island with John. Now we know that prisoners often were accompanied by attendants or by slaves, so it's very possible that John did not come alone but by uh, Another uh, Christian, a friend, came with him to the island. And the traditions that we see on icons here are, are when John received the revelation, uh, he dictated it to uh, Procurus, who wrote down the revelations of Jesus Christ uh, that John received. What was the island's religion before John came? Well, our sources tell us that we have several different uh, religious uh, cults on the island here. Uh, there was an Amazon temple at the north end of the island. 
But the primary uh, worship here was Artemis, the uh, particular Artemis Padmean. And so there was a relationship, of course, with the Artemis uh, in Ephesus as well. But uh, where the monastery now stands, uh, we believe that uh, a Temple of Artemis stood. Uh, in the museum a library at the monastery, we have an uh, inscription there that mentions uh, a woman who was a priestess uh, at the Temple of Artemis here on the island of Patmos. What traditions emerged from John's presence on the island? Well, we have several traditions here on the island of Patmos related to the preaching of John. Uh, near the harbor at Scala, there's a, a remains of a baptistry there. And most certainly as John was on the island, he would not have been locked up, I don't think. He would have had uh, access to roam around the island, uh, maybe even work when he's here, uh, uh, be able to maybe fish, uh, take care of himself. And certainly I, uh, John would have preached to the local inhabitants. And so uh, it's not surprising that uh, we have these traditions that some became believers and were baptized. How old was John when he was in Patmos? Regarding the age of John, uh, we probably don't know a lot. Uh, if we think of Jesus being born about 4 BC <laughs> and uh, dying around 30 to 33, so in his early 30s, uh, Probably John, uh, being on the island, uh, is an older man, uh, probably in his 60s, I think, when he is sent in exile here. Later traditions are that he is the only one of the 12 that dies a natural death. And so uh, he dies somewhere uh, at the end of the first century in Ephesus, uh, perhaps uh, at the end of Domitian's reign or at the beginning of Nerva's reign in 95 or 96. So that would put him uh, roughly in his 60s uh, here on the island of Patmos uh, in the late uh, 60s and 69. Do we know where the tomb of John is? Well, the traditions relate that John was released from exile here on the island and returned to Ephesus, and he lived out the rest of his days there. Uh, when we visit Ephesus today, there is a magnificent church uh, that uh, is in the uh, modern city of Selchuk there, the, uh, related to the Basilica of St. John. In its initial phase, it was simple tomb that was in a necropolis or cemetery uh, there uh, in the area. And the local Christians maintained the traditions that uh, John was buried here uh, in the city of Ephesus. Uh, we have a very early document from the uh, a bishop of Ephesus by the name of Polycrates, who in writing to the bishop in Rome says, we have the trophies or the places of burial of two of the apostles here in the province of Asia. We have Philip in Hierapolis and we have John here in Ephesus. So he said, you can boast that you have two of these trophies in Rome, Peter and Paul. Well, we have two here in Asia as well with John and Philip. And so uh, we see this tradition very early arising and we see Christian pilgrims like Agaria coming very early to visit Ephesus and to see the tomb of John. And then in later times after Christianity is legalized, we see churches then uh, being built around the tomb, first by Theodosius, and then later by Justinian. 